Final Countdown is a science fiction film released in 1980, directed by Don Taylor. It's set on a US aircraft carrier called the USS Nimitz, which is captained by Kirk Douglas, which is the reason we're doing it uh, this week, because obviously he sadly passed away at the ripe old age of 103. Obviously, you know, huge career, planning lots and lots of movies. Massive. Um, one Massive. of which is this. So he's captain in this aircraft carrier. We see it set sail from Pearl Harbor with some other ships. On board is like a, a civilian observer played by Martin Sheen. He's just sort of observing what they're doing and see if he if he can make improvements anywhere on, yeah. on their sort of what you know how they do things. Yeah. So yeah, we see them, you know, perform maneuvers and things like that. And it's obviously aircraft carriers, so we see planes taking off and landing. And then some weather seems to come in. We see lots of shots of radars and the weather was forecast to be fine, so they're all a bit confused as to why this storm has suddenly come in. But it's not a normal storm as they quickly realise with all these weird clouds and there's lightning all over the place and then suddenly this swirling vortex appears yeah. then sort of engulfs the ship and there's like this loud noise and everyone's grabbing their ears and and everything and then suddenly it's all over and they're still in the sea but all the other ships that are around them aren't there anymore and they can't pick up any anything on radio so all a bit confused about what's going on turns out they've gone back to 1941 right. just before the attack on Pearl Harbor by the Japanese quite you know obviously of course that's what they've done so yeah yeah, and then it's obviously it takes them a while to sort of figure this out that that's what's happening and then they you know they send up some planes to to have a look and they can see you know they take photos of Pearl Harbor and of course it's just how it was you know before it was attacked they can see the you know the ships that you know the famous ships that are all sunk you know in the attack the famous one the Arizona Arizona yeah. yeah and then they find the you know they see the Japanese fleet and then they see some you know the the, the Japanese zeros flying over and there's a little boat a sort of a pleasure cruiser that's got um, a senator on it was a real person who uh, who potentially could have been a running mate for Roosevelt if he hadn't mysteriously disappeared just before the Pearl Harbor attack so that kind of ties into to real events and yeah so then it's sort of you know do, it's all the sort of the time travel quandaries do they intervene do they not because you know obviously this well it's that it's that wonderful you know you've so you've gone back in time to the Second World War, yeah. you have this modern machine, modern <laughs> war machine. Yeah, outguns everything that the, totally, you know, the Japanese yeah. you fleet could, You could have completely got. blown them all out of the yeah. water. So yeah, it's, there's lots of conversations over what, what is actually happening, whether it's a test by somebody, whether Martin Sheen knows all about it, and it's all some elaborate plan. And yeah, what when they decide that maybe they really are in 1941, exactly what they do with that information and how they proceed. So strange little movie. Strange little movie. <laughs> but quite fun. Yes, yeah, so yes, yeah, so obviously Kirk Douglas he passed away a couple couple of weeks now, isn't it? Yeah. But we thought, you know, huge career. Which which film did you choose? But obviously we like to cover more obscure films, yeah. so we thought we'd go with this one because you know everyone knows Spartacus and Paths of Glory and all the great famous Kirk Douglas films. But this one perhaps not so many. And obviously it's not it's not really a Kirk Douglas film. No. Uh, he's in it, and the same with Martin Sheen. You know, it's these two. I think that's what I really enjoy about this film. It's 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 a lot of fun this film, but you've got these two kind of high caliber actors mm. who are in this potentially dumb science fiction movie, <laughs> but they really give it their all. Yeah, it's yeah. like they really seriously believe they've gone back to 1941. <laughs> I love it for that. Uh, and Martin Sheen is great as well in this. It's also got James Frantino, who of course we have covered recently in Dead and Buried. Yeah, and he's a little bit mysterious as mm. well. It's got a really good cast. This film. You've got the Sen- senator is played by Charles Durning, and he's also got Catherine Ross on there. They're obviously the ones from the past. Yeah. Who are who are kind of caught up in this this time thing? Uh, and there was a great scene when uh, you know they hear this noise in the distance, and then they they go out onto the, the deck of their boat, and then suddenly these like these fighter Tornadoes go over, they yeah. scream overhead and oh, and off into the sky, and yeah. they're like, "What the hell are they? Who's what markings are on there?" And all this kind of stuff. And uh, it's it's a great it's, it's it's one of those kind of great ideas that you know what what if. I must just correct myself. I call them tornadoes, and anyone who likes planes is probably going to moan me. So I think they were F-14s, weren't they? Actually, sorry. Okay, so. <laughs> right. I don't know. I don't, yeah, they just. I know that they go fast. Yeah. <laughs> they make loud noises. Uh, they look cool when yeah. they race across the sky. I will give them that. A tornado. Is that a British plane? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're Britain flown by. By the Brits. Yeah. Yes. 
Can you tell? I don't know what I'm talking about. No. <laughs> well, I mean, I think obviously all the air, you know, the the stuff with the planes in the air is all really well filmed, and and, and you could tell, you know, it's all real. Well, that's another uh, thing I was going to say about this yeah. movie. It is. There's no. I mean, I think obviously nowadays a lot of this would be CGI, mm. but it costs like isn't it a ridiculous amount of money to just send one of these planes up into the mm. air? I'm probably going to get my figures wrong here, but it's like, it's like hundred and fifty thousand dollars <laughs> or something like that, <laughs> literally just to send one of these planes into the air. And obviously the American government or the American people. Or taxpayers all have to pay all this kind of crazy mm. money nowadays it's obviously easier to CGI it you know and obviously when there's, there's shots of them all taking you off from the aircraft carrier yeah. and it's probably just the same two planes that they've just well, filmed well no they, well, they, they did actually film on the real USS Nimitz oh okay and when they were filming inside it was docked at the port so they were actually filming uh, okay. in the boat right. and when they were you know the planes were taking off that was real planes from the real ship taking off at oh, okay. sea and I think even the there's an emergency landing for one of the planes. I'm not sure, I can't remember if that was planned or not, but they obviously filmed it. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, that was, a, again, a real emergency landing. Oh, okay. So, because yes, um, I suppose, yes, if they're just doing their everyday work, yeah. you can just film that. I mean, a lot of the extras were actually crew on the ship. Okay. And some of them yeah, even right. had lines in that. It is sort of real plain porn, this film, because <laughs> there's a lot, okay. particularly right at the end, All right. there's a shot. There's like five minutes of just planes taking there is, off there is. Yeah, literally that. It's like, right, yeah. okay. Uh, <laughs> is <it> still <laughs> taking off? How many planes has this ship got on it? <laughs> but yeah, there's all sorts of, uh, of different aircraft on there so if you like planes you'll love it you know I think that really adds to it because it all just looks authentic, authentic. because it is yeah. Top Gun has got a lot of that but this has got even more I think and then because you've also got I mean it's amazing with all the Japanese ones that fly yeah over so the, um, the Zeros were actually replicas that were made for Tora 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 ah, so they okay. brought those right. in that's a good film yeah so those you know they really were flying F-14s with the Zeros and wow. there was a couple of risks you know when they flew a bit close the sort of the air from the from the F-14s sort of made the Zeros sort of out of control for a few moments yeah because I mean because I I, again like I said I know next to nothing about planes (laughs) you know nowadays we have super fast ones yeah and in those days they they were quite little nippy buggers but they're nothing compared to what we have have today and to have a dogfight with the two of them you can imagine wow that must be some (laughs) tight choreographing going on oh absolutely Uh, so it must have been it must have been so much fun Mm. to to film and to you know for those guys to fly together but I can I can well imagine there being a few like there was I think there was a few heart in mouths moments I think yeah definitely (laughs) yeah I think when they were first filming some of the planes taking off the cameraman and the camera were flung back across the the runway Wow. Uh, because they didn't quite realise the force that comes out the back of these planes. Just going back to Toro, 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 they did use some footage from that film, made it black and white, and then put it in as sort of footage of Pearl oh, Harbour. Oh, really? Being okay. Filmed. Didn't realise that. I thought so, it was actual footage. Amazing. I think some of it was. Some of it was. Some of yeah, it was stock yeah. footage. Other, other, other bits were, were lifted from, from that movie. Just all adds to the authenticity. I've seen it a couple of times before. I think we said when we did Happy Accidents a few weeks ago, which is also a time travel film, mm. I loved, I mean, you love time travel. Yeah. Who doesn't like time travel? I'm a big fan of time travel movies. And this is just, it's very simple. It's a bit Twilight Zone like yeah. this one. It's a, it's a kind of a real what if moment. And it's just, there's a Martin Sheen makes the, he does a whole monologue on the whole grandfather syndrome mm. you know he actually literally talks about it that, well, yeah. you know you couldn't do this and all that kind of stuff and they have fun with the whole time travel stuff and there's there's moments when they're not quite sure what's going on and they hear like old time radio someone who was famous in the someone 40s who, someone who's famous in the <laughs> 40s and they talk about it and they're like well he's on the radio and it, so you have all that going on and then of course you've got the senator so obviously that then brings in people from that time mm. and they are at some point brought onto the ship they're very confused who are you you sound like Americans but what is this thing we've never seen so who can this crazy yeah, and they thing. Got, uh, they, there's helicopters, and of course they were, didn't weren't really and they around weren't in the really 40s. around. No, <laughs> although I think they were around. Not really. But not like not like that. No. Obviously, not that kind of big double blade. They weren't thing going around picking were. people up, and, and they like certainly that. weren't doing that. No, exactly. <laughs> I think that that's the thing. The cast and the authenticity the, and the authenticity yeah. really sell it. I think without those, because the plot is pretty thin, isn't it? Pretty and thin. the whole sort of yeah. the sci-fi element of it, you know, there's no explanation as to what's happened or no. anything like that. Hence why. A bit you Twilight know. Zone, like, yeah. isn't it? It comes out of nowhere and then it goes back to yeah, where yeah. it came from, and you like none the wiser no. by the end of it. So if you're looking for sort of hardcore sci-fi, you're not really going to get it. You're not. If you're looking for hardcore plane action, then you're going to get you're it. Get it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's just a fun, silly sort of summer blockbustery kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. With Kirk Douglas and Martin Sheen. Yeah. I love the bit when they go back in time and you get that kind of, you get this, it's, it's almost like they're really kind of, because again, before CGI, but they're really having fun with, you know, camera. Yeah, weird, there's all sorts of like, weird visuals. Weird visuals there, yeah. and, you know, 
like plasma colours, lots blues. of silhouettes, and then they're all like, because they're all doing the classic, you know, like <laughs> all over the place, and then they're like, because they they go deaf, and they're like what? But it's just again. It's like you're watching Kirk Douglas. What was he thinking? Because he's like, oh, okay, so I have to pretend I can't hear because there's this like science fiction thing going what? on. And he's actually there going, oh, like falling was, over. What was happening Amazing. was his Love son was producing. What was ah, happening? That's what was happening. Michael? Uh, no, no. no um, Peter. Peter Douglas? Yes. Oh, okay. That one. <laughs> Never heard of that one. There you go. <laughs> the other one. The other uh, one. And it was also interesting... Produced by Law Lloyd um, Kaufman, who's oh, from right. Troma. Okay, so yes, before he is, was, yeah. you know, messing around with Toxic Avengers, he was he doing was, this. Yeah, doing oh, this. Okay, so. oh, interesting. So it was a plane like second in command to Kirk Douglas's Ron O'Neill. I think mostly famous for sort of being in black exploitation films in the seventies. Yeah. Um, was also in Red Dawn. You know, the original oh, right. original one with. Patrick Swayze was in that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's in a lot of. They basically have a lot of scenes where you know Marty Jean and Kirk Douglas and Ron O'Neill and James, James of Farantino yeah. are all sort of yeah around a table talking about are we, where the hell are, where we? are we? What are we going to do? What the hell's going this? on? Shall we? Shall we win this? Shall we? Shall we fight <laughs> shall or shall we not fight? Because you know we will obviously wipe them all out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we could win the Second World War, but then <laughs> we could change history. Yes. Mm, where would that get us? So well, that's the, you yeah. know that is the crux of it. Really, is that of course if. Pearl Harbor hadn't happened, then would the Americans have joined the Second World War? Yeah. Quite possibly not. And yeah, of course, yeah. if they hadn't, you know, while us plucky Brits were doing our best, you know, maybe we wouldn't have, you know, we wouldn't have won. So exactly. yeah, that's the sort of the thing they're trying to, they're struggling with. Anyway, we should get on to, we don't have this on disc actually. No. Um, we watched it on Amazon Prime yep. because it is available on there. At, yes. In Britain, at least, if you're from Britain. Mm-hmm. So if you have Amazon Prime, that is, you can go and watch it on there. We're not being... Sponsored by Amazon. No, so, so <laughs> we just both have it. We just so. both, yeah, and we both we both liked, um, but we didn't have it on disc. But can you get it on disc? You can, yeah. There was a uh, Blue Underground released a Blu-ray a few years ago, um, okay. which has got a few features on it. I mean, it was obviously on DVD as well. There's DVDs all over the place. Uh, most of them don't have any extras, though. So if you do want the extras, you'll have to go for the for the US one. And um, interestingly, there was a 3D Blu-ray released in Germany. So I don't think the film was ever in 3D, but they sometimes some films do get like converted for some reason and then put out on disc. I can't, I don't know what the quality is like of the 3D. I don't know. But interestingly, on the disc as like an extra is the movie Proof, which has absolutely nothing to do <laughs> with the final countdown. Right. But weirdly, that is the next movie that we're going to do. And you picked it without knowing that that. Oh, is... oh you mean the, the film? Yeah, proof? yeah, yeah. The film proof. So hold on a minute, just <laughs> rewind. Just rewind a minute. What were you talking about? <laughs> Say that again. The three D Blu Ray. Yeah. In Germany. Yeah. Obviously, it has the final countdown in three D. Yeah. Also on the disc, it has the movie Proof, starring Russell Crowe and Hugo. That we've Reaper. chosen to do next week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I was read that, I was like, "What? Really? <laughs> we, we don't swear on the channel, but what no. the?" F- <laughs> I just, so, I just entered my own final card in Twilight Zone episode. I don't know. It's but bizarre. No one seems to know why. It doesn't mention it on the box. That's amazing. But I've read, you know, on various forums, I think to... people that own the disc say, yeah, the movie Proof is on there as well as like an extra. And it has zero to do with the final count. It doesn't share any cast that I'm aware of. It's, you know, made in a different <laughs> decade, in a different country. It's about a completely different thing. And ju- uh, just, to, just to prove we're not making this up, we are no. literally about to film this yes. now. We're about to do it for the next video, because <laughs> uh, we filmed two videos in one go, because we have other lives. Uh, so, so, so this video features on well, this film, Yeah, uh, I'm blown. My <laughs> mind is blown. So that literally is like Twilight Zone. <laughs> I, I had an hour to I can't up that one I can't no. I can't beat that one anymore. That's it really. We should just finish now. Yeah. So that was the final countdown. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, let us know in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button up there, and don't forget to hit the bell for notifications. There's other videos to check out over there. Uh, come and find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And come back next week for another video.